Hello and welcome to uh, a new video in my channel and today we're going to be talking about routing and decision making in the OT randomizer. Now this is something that I have been thinking about a lot and questions have been popping up in the chat, they always do, in terms of why am I choosing to do some things instead of other things in the course of a seed and then I thought I'd compile my thoughts here in this sort of kind of presentation. I know this is not what I usually do. I generally like doing more organic stuff. And this is going to be like single take. So if I make any mistakes or everything, I'm not going to add anything else. But yeah, um, basically I'm, I'm pouring my, my brain here on this presentation. And I want you guys to, uh, I wouldn't say even learn, like you, you check out how I feel about how to play the game and give suggestions, see where you do things differently, where you think I should do things differently, and then we go from there, all right? So going from an overview here, what we're gonna see in this presentation, I'm gonna basically do a tier list of what I think are the most important resources when, when playing a seed. I am absolutely aware that I'm not in the presentation mode in PowerPoint, all right? I, I know that. You may be thinking, hey, this guy doesn't even know how to use PowerPoint. I do know how to use it. Uh, yeah, but um, I want to make a tier list of what resources you have available to you during a seed. Then you're going to decide what is essential and non-essential in a seed. Well, things you're going to have to do, things you may have to do, things you absolutely will not have to do. Uh, how you're going to deal with Way of the Hero and Foolish Hints. Very important part, of course. Uh, some ancillary things that are also very important, of course, which are school toolers, usage of Rose Wind, opening routing, everything. Uh, bricks and logic, which you can do using tricks uh, when you might want to do that, when you might not want to do that, or still do it, but keep in mind or have in uh, consideration what could be the implications of your choices. And finally, we're going to discuss a little bit about game phases and spheres. This game phase concept I'm bringing from uh, an ATZ video that I'm going to show later and I very much agree with him on his analysis of it. All right, so let's go. First of all, uh, we can, we could uh, break down what you have available to you in a single seed as resources. We have songs, we have information and we have checks and checks ultimately they become items as you find items um, good ones that uh, can make you clear the seed, of course, like a hammer or strength grid, or just trash items like a blue rupee or ammo, things like that. Uh, so in this slide, I'm showing my personal tier list for resources. I myself think that songs are the by far the most important resource in a seed, uh, not only because they unlock stuff. If we bring up my tracker here, uh, we can see that we have, of course, Zelda's Lullaby, we have Opponent Song, Sarius. So all these songs are going to uh, open checks to you. But also we have Warp Songs. And Warp Songs, though they do not by themselves open checks, though uh, Requiem and Nocturne, they lock out access to two dungeons, um, Spirit Temple and Shadow Temple. I, maybe you can get to Spirit Temple without Requiem, but you, you, get my, my, you catch my drift here. Uh, but they can massively reduce the amount of travel time you have during a seed. So, uh, seeds that you have to visit Lake Hylia several times and you do not have Serenade, they tend to go much, much longer than the ones that you do because you can simply warp there instead of getting out of the, the castle, calling your horse, going all the way there, etc. Right? Second, we have information. Information is uh, collected from the handstones and also can be collected by yourself as you um, see how the seed is developing. For example, you mark song checks and then you see that maybe a song is for sure in Ice Cavern or there's a 50-50, it could be there, it could be in Burning Cack. So this kind of information. And finally, we have checks. Checks are the least important thing. There are lots of them, like more than 300 checks available in the game, but obviously you have to do them to get to the items. Um, okay. So when approaching a seed in terms of routing, and I've uh, tried to change my routing as a recent, uh, I, I have always been a very thorough player in terms of when I get to a place, I try to do every single check I can there because I don't like doing revisits. And that's a good approach. But uh, if you have faster seeds, 
that is not very good because you end up losing time mostly on overworld checks instead of just going to the stuff that you absolutely need to do which uh, can lead to a better time of course but there's stuff that you are always going to have to do no matter the seed uh, that's Midas house of course you get out you're going to get those four chests I mean there's no two ways around it. You see that I don't have the Kokiri sword chest here and this is important because I've watched many people lately and it's a good route change that I made, uh, copying from them of course, that after Midos, if I'm not doing Deku Tree, I just get out of the forest and go to one of the opening routes I'm gonna show later. And you might be asking yourself, hey, why are you not checking the, the Kokiri sword chest? Because it's a time loss and more often than not, you're going to run into a handstone on this opening part of the game that is going to say Kokiri Forest is foolish. Other bam, you just don't check the, the, the Kokiri Sword Chest and you just got yourself like 30-40 seconds for free there. All right? Next we have the Tree Song Route, which is Zelda's Lullaby, Epona Song and Saria. It's not the songs themselves, but the checks, right? On Zelda, Malon and Saria. On those three you're generally going to do anyways. Uh, I can't really remember see that I haven't done those, except maybe on Song Shuffle, but we're not discussing uh, special settings here. And finally, of course, you have to do your six medallions to beat the game. This goes without saying. Uh, so this you're going to have to do pretty much every seed. All right. What stuff that you're probably going to have to do every seed? Uh, Deku Tree is the first one. Are you going to have to beat Deku Tree every, every seed? I'm not saying yes, but I'm saying very, very likely. Because there we have six checks that are sphere zero and one check that's sphere one that requires a slingshot. So uh, they're also very fast to go through, very convenient because uh, Deku Tree is very near your house as you save warp from child side. So I would say 99.9% .9 of the seeds have done Deku Tree. Uh, and there's also the very high chance that it's going to be a medallion. So yeah. Adult Kakariko plus Graveyard, I have been trying to phase out going to Kakariko as child unless I absolutely need to because if you go to Adult Kak, you can do every single check you can as child except for chickens and sometimes chickens have items, it's frequent, in fact I think like the percentage is like 22%, something like that, that anti chickens are going to have a major item but I'm, I usually try to postpone the check up until a time that I am running out of options because it's a very time consuming check for sure unless you have settings that reduce the amount of chickens you need. I do like playing with like zero cocos or one cocoa required which makes it much more convenient to do. Second of all we have graveyard. Graveyard, uh, very fast, uh, very necessary place to check of course. Uh, you can do every single check you can as adult in graveyard as you can as child, except for uh, the grave digging tour. Uh, Dempe, that you have to catch him the first time, I believe, 21 seconds during night time. Alright, so generally I try to do adult cack in graveyard and I basically orphan two checks there as child, which are chickens, and grave digging tour. And when the time arises, I, I try to do those. Of course, we also have one song check in this route, which is the Windmill Song, uh, the Song of Storm check. Then we have the Dongo's Cavern. The Dongo's Cavern um, only requires bombs, or uh, you can also do it with the Strength Upgrade, you can do it with the Hammer, lots of checks, of course, and also Bomb Choose, other logic. Um, the Dongo's Cavern has, I think, seven checks, we're, we're gonna see here further on, and it's very fast, so not as high of a completion rate as Deku Tree, but very frequently you're going to clear the Dongus Cavern as well. And also we have uh, sort of a uniroute uh, segue that you go from Kakariko to Trail to Goron City to Crater and then into Lost Woods and Forest. And that gives you two song checks which are the Bolero check and the Minuet check and also a bunch of uh, checks in between, maybe a couple of skulls as well. Now, some things may change from seed to seed here. If you get a Bolero early, maybe you don't go from Kakariko to Trey, you can go to the crater and come from there. Uh, maybe you don't have hover boots or hook shots, in which case you cannot do uh, the Bolero check. You can do the minuet check out of logic using a ground jump using bombs. That's something to keep in mind. And yeah, the Lost Woods, um, 
section I try to do as adult because you generally need explosives to do all that. All right. Uh, something that I didn't mention here on my always have to do, the third, the second pass you have here on Kokiri Forest, which is doing the Saria song, you obviously are gonna go through Lost Woods and do the checks that you can there. If you have a slingshot, obviously do targets in the woods, you uh, do the Ocarina mini game always, and then you go and shoot the Sacred Forest medal to get your song. If you have bombs, great, you do the stuff in between. And finally, I go for the bridge scrub. I see some people, uh, some yeah, some people go to the bridge scrub first. That is, you get into the Lost Woods, you go left to the bridge scrub, and then do the rest. I do not like that too much because uh, climbing from the bridge scrub, that, that ladder to the Lost Woods, is a bit time consuming. So I try to warp out from there or just save and quit, all right? So that is like a minor time save that you can gain there. There is one way that this can backfire. If the scrub has bombs, uh, then basically you lost the opportunity of doing three checks on the way. The boulder in front of the Garden City, the boulder in front of the Sacred Forest Meadow, and the Walfoos Grotto. But, I mean, that's how it goes, I guess. All right? So, this is early routing, okay? I'm not, I'm not discussing anything like rocket science here. It's just stuff that you think uh, you might have to do. Now, see here, I haven't uh, talked about South Hyrule. I have not talked about Gruda Valley. I have not said anything about Zora's River, all right? Uh, and chickens, everything like that. So these are checks that you probably are going to do on the, during the seed, but you don't want to get to them right away because in some seeds, especially jet seeds, you're going to already start to get items that are going to open up dungeons for you. And you just want to go for those dungeons and roll with the possibility that the seed is going to be fast, right? If you approach the seed with the mindset that it's going to be slow and I'm going to be thorough and check everything, uh, this is great. You're not going to have to backtrack as much. But if the seed ends up being fast, you're going to lose out. Like, that's just a fact. Uh, so the mindset you have to go into is basically I'm going to do uh, the minimal necessary without uh, leaving too much orphaned. And if I need to, I'm gonna go back to those checks, but minimizing the time you, you're gonna waste on the revisits. All right. All other decisions are gonna depend on the medallions, all right? So uh, if you already start with the forest medallion or if uh, it's easy to get, like it's in Deku Tree, it's in the Dongos Cavern, or maybe it's in Forest Temple, but you already got a uh, hookshot bow, and the strength up, you just rush the force medallion, like no questions asked, and then you get your prelude check on the Temple of Time. Like that is also uh, a very good decision always. Next, if you have the forest fire and water medallions easily accessible, maybe it's free in Deku Dodongo or it's free Deku Jabu, but you found Brutos and Boomerang Fest, you just rush those as well, because first of all, those are medallions, you're gonna need them anyways, and second of all, it's another song, which is the Burning Cac, all right? If you get Requiem, that's a free song. Uh, you have to consider when uh, checking the song from Requiem, the time of day, all right? This is important, and uh, sometimes I want to use the time of day to do some kind of check. For example, the best example is going for the grave digging, grave digging tour in Kakariku Graveyard with Dempe. Uh, and a couple of times I have gone for the Requiem check. I get out, I get the song, and then time is set to midday. I think 10 a.m. actually, 10 a.m. or midday. And then time of day is ruined. I'm gonna have to wait like two minutes until it's night time to do my CAC check, all right? So you can be creative. For example, uh, Say you, you want to go adult, you, you just finished your tree song route, all right? And you want to go adult and go Kakariko and Graveyard and the Dongos from there, all right? Great stuff. As adult, you generally want to enter Kakariko daytime because there's one check that you can only get during the day, which is Anju with the, with the Pocket Coco. I think it's the Pocket Coco, right? Uh, and the Vanilla Game. If you get there nights, Anju is not going to be there. What you might want to do is instead of playing Requiem as kid, checking that, and then going to adult, you can get to adult, you play Requiem, then you get the song. If it's Nocturne, great stuff, you're already in Kakariko. That's excellent. If it's not, you just save and quit, you're back at the Temple of Time, 
and then you you go to Kakariko and it's going to be daytime for sure, right? So this is something to keep in mind. If you get a warp song that segues into a new warp song, that's Minuet, Requiem, Bolero, uh, you generally want to play that song and get the new song immediately because maybe that's going to give you another song. You generally get uh, like a little train of songs, like you get one and then the other, the other, the other. That's excellent. But also uh, it can get you a warp song that's going to get you faster to the place you want to get to. Nocturne is the best example for that, right? You want to get to Kakariko, you think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk from the, from the castle to there. Maybe not. You play Bolero, you get Nocturne, and then you play Nocturne and you're already in Kakariko. Minor time saves, good stuff. Uh, ZL, if you get Zelzalabai, you have a free song in the graveyard, which is the composer's grave, and a ton of checks unlocked. Um, by a ton of checks, I mean ZL opens up Azora's domain for adult, opens up for child as well if you have bombs. Uh, what else? Opens up a lot of checks inside the well, of course, allows you to get into the boat in Shadow Temple, opens up all fairy fountains if you have explosives, and some other things, all right? Uh, checks inside Spirit Temple. There we go. Uh, Bold Online, songs are very important, all right? That's what I'm saying. So you're gonna prioritize songs a lot in your seeds. Don't get into a, um, a sidetrack where you're going, oh, I can't do this overworld check and then I can do that another. I can go into Goron City and do the Rolling Goron and then maybe I do the Runia. And sure, there could be items there. Perhaps, that'd be great for you. But more often than not, they're not gonna have anything and you're just wasting minutes, whereas you could just shoot for your songs, get your items, and then go do dungeons, right? Talking about information, information, I'm mainly talking about hint stones here. Obviously they give hints for you, which is very, very good. Uh, I'm gonna take this time to plug in my hint tracker, which you can access if you simply come here into Google and you select, uh, you type in OT Rendo uh, hint helper, hint helper. And then this is going to be my repository here on GitHub, right? And you can grab your, uh, there is a, it's a Python script. You can also and get here, get here to releases and download an executable. That's going to allow you to use a console version that goes like this. I have a video specifically on this, right? So not going to go too much into it, but basically this is a program that I made that allows you to fast, uh, very fast input hints and keep on track, they have terrible memory, so it's good for me. Uh, on tournament settings, which is mainly what we're focusing here, you have guaranteed five Way to Hero hints and three Foolish hints. Uh, way to Heroes are places where you're gonna find at least one item that is necessary for you to finish the seed. Uh, if you get more than three, every every hint is duplicated, right? So if you have Fire Temple Way to Hero, you're gonna get two hints for that. If you get a third, well, then you know there is actually at least two items on that place that you absolutely need, all right? So you go, you go to a way of the hero place that you got three items, as you find as you, uh, that you got three hints. As you find the first item, don't stop just yet. Keep going until you find the second one. Uh, in 5.2, which was released today, I think, uh, a way of the hero hint will not point towards, towards light arrows because you can get that that hint from Gandorf. So this is very good. Uh, not something that I like too much uh, up until now. So we'll see how this change uh, pans out, but it seems to me like it's a very good thing, All right? Uh, I say here that routing should consider hitting as many hint stones as possible, but don't waste too much time otherwise. So there are a lot of hint stones around the way. I discussed a little bit of this in my routing video. Uh, I think I talked about it in school tools as well. Uh, but yeah, as you go to Saria, you can go from the back and get three hint stones in Sacred Forest Meadow. You have two hint stones on each side of the Deku Tree that are also very good. I have a video on that. Let me see here if I can find it, just so we're being thorough here. Pa -pa -pa, videos. It's this one, uh, tracking hints and hint stones. So I made a, a video specifically on this on this theme here that you can watch. Basically, I show where every hint stone is and how you might want to route them in your in your game. All right? 
so yeah you just go to my you search for graffiti x on youtube you're going to find my my channel and there you go tracking hints and hint zones that's the video you want to look for all right so great stuff now you have information uh, how do you deal with weird hero hints? Weird hero hints are very important. You want to prioritize them as soon as possible. Uh, I say here, even breaking logic, if applicable. There is good places to break logic. There is not so good places to break logic. So, if you get forest temple weird hero and you don't have minuets and saris, should you do forest temple? Of course, you just do minus skip and go for it because you're going to get an item that's going to enable you to do more of the seed. That's a no-brainer. Other places, maybe not so much. For example, you see GTG where the hero. You don't have zero gauntlet. Should you go? I would go because there's only four chests that are locked by uh, zero gauntlets inside GTG. So the likelihood that you're going to find the stuff that you're looking for there is very high. Now, you have GTG where the hero, but you don't have a hook shot. Should you go there? You know, that loses value. GTG where the hero, and you don't have a bow loses value as well. You're going to lose the two uh, chests right in front and also the two checks in the spinning room with, uh, with the statue. So yeah, you, you want to balance that out, right? Uh, maybe you can go right away for a way of the hero hint. Consider if you should or if you should not break logic in that regard. Uh, let's see here. Try and work rounds and include checks in between your current position and the way of the hero place. Also say the Dongus Cabin is way of the hero, right? You are adult link, you just got out of Temple of Time, you get into Kakariko. Do you beeline to the Dongos Cavern? I would not do that, because there is a lot of checks in Kakariko that are Sphere Zero, Anju, the Cow Hole, you have a song inside the windmill, you have Damper Race, that's a bit of a time loss, like maybe you disagree on this with me. Uh, most times I would do Damper Race, but I wouldn't understand if you don't want to waste that time, for sure. Uh, there's the Shield, the Highland Shield Grave inside the graveyard that is also sphere zero so yeah uh, i wouldn't just beeline for the dongos cavern maybe i would do a couple checks or all checks in this case in kakariko but this is more of a play style decision all right i i know players that they just beeline the thing and it works out and sometimes it doesn't you can always go back that's that's also a fact be careful with settings and or disable tricks when considering items you found in where the hero locations. Now, I have a great example for this. There's a seed I played, I think, today or yesterday that did not, that Lens of Truth was required in every single place. So not only Wasteland and Treasure Chest minigame, but also Shadow Temple and everything. Uh, and then I had a hint that was Water Temple where the hero. I got into Water Temple. I was missing one item that was Mirror Shield, I believe. And then I found the Lens of Truth. Now, I know that it's required for everything, the lens, and I have to do Shadow Temple because it was a medallion. I already know that Water Temple probably doesn't have any more items, so I just got out of there, right? So you have to keep in mind what tricks are or are not enabled when checking for where the hero places. Uh, early and late where the hero clears. Uh, sometimes you're going to find where the hero hints that you won't be able to check or won't be accessible for a long long time right so you get shadow temple where the hero and of course you don't have magic you don't have dance you don't have hovers so you simply can't get into there all right you're gonna check shadow very late in the game that's actually pretty good generally i don't don't mind that much some other times the way the hero hints are all gonna be early biased so they're gonna point to i don't know hyrule castle and then you get a song from zelda they're pointing to sacred forest meadow and then you get a song from sari or from minuet they're gonna point to i don't know markets and then you get something from bomb to bowling or dizzling shot minigame or richard and i don't know you're one hour into the seed and you've already checked all five way of the hero hints and got the items or songs from there and there you go now what happens you're pretty much blind from the rest of the seed for the rest of the seed right this is not a very fortunate position to be in. It does happen a lot, uh, unfortunately. So from then on, you're going to have to use other resources to try and solve the seed. You're going to have to analyze fears, which we're going to discuss uh, on the end of this presentation. And also, you're going to have to go for other parameters like checks per minute. You're going to have to try to be thorough and work yourself out of this lack of information all right uh, consider all the logic tricks when checking where the hero locations uh yeah 
So I say here, for example, you did mind escape, you did forest temple early. Now, very late in the game, you're checking, I don't know, graveyard with the hero, and you go there and you find a minuet, or you find Saria Song. Maybe that's the logical pointing to the appropriate point in time that you should be doing forest temple, right? So you got minuet, that is the way the hero thing that you're looking for, and not other checks. For example, you, you're not looking for the Sun Song Grave with the Redead, right? So keep that in mind as you are clearing your way to hero hands. Foolish hands, they indicate that no good items are going to be in the place. You can basically uh, skip everything in a foolish place. Uh, this does not apply to the Scarecrow, all right? So if you get Lake Highly as Foolish, this does not mean that you will not need the Scarecrow in the game. You might need it for Fire Temple uh, PR chest, things like that, right? Or also the the chest on top of Gruda Fortress. Uh, they're very good Foolish hints. So sometimes you get, I love getting Ground City Foolish. Lost Woods Foolish usually comes at a later time, but it's good as well. Market Foolish, if you get it very early, can be good. Uh, also, Temples that can be Foolish are pretty good to get. Uh, well, it depends on the Temple really, but Water Temple Foolish is good. Fire Temple Foolish is good as well. All right. Um, Ice Cabin Foolish is good and bad because you still have Zora's Fountain in the on, on play. You, you have to consider. Uh, there are also terrible foolish hints, right? Uh, classic examples. Outside Ganon's Castle, single check. That's the, the double defense fairy. Uh, wasteland, terrible foolish check. There's only one chest there. So, I mean, you're going to have to work with what you get. Uh, foolish hints and temples that are not good are forest and shadow temple, in my opinion. Because forest, you pretty much can't skip anything except in key sanity. But otherwise, you're going to have to do mostly every single check. And Shadow Temple, same thing, you're a very linear temple, you have to do every chest on the way because you need all the small keys. So I mean, whatever, if you get a Foolish for those two, not as useful. Focus on progression. Now, this is a mistake that I have made a lot as I was starting out playing, and I see a lot of new players doing, uh, that maybe you have the items to do a dungeon, but you don't go for some reason. Like, I don't know, you, you just did CAC, and... You, you're doing trail, I guess, and you can't clear Forest Temple, but you think, well, you know what, I never did Zora River, so you go back and do Zora River, or, you know what, I just got the Slingshot, maybe I should go back and check Target in the Woods. Um, being thorough is good, but if you can do a dungeon that is a medallion, you should do the dungeon, like, ASAP. That is always a good decision. Even if you can't full clear a dungeon, it's also probably a good decision to get in and do whatever you can, all right? I have some examples here. So Forest Temple, a very good place. You just get inside Forest Temple. Say you don't have a bow, but you have um, Song of Time. Or you have a bow and a hookshot, but you don't have a Strength of Braid. No problem. You get in, you do the first two checks, the one on top of the tree, the Stalfos, and then you do the outside courtyard, which is like three checks, right? You have the map chest, you have the, the one next to the gold school tula and you have the one under the the well with with the water and then you get out uh it's barely a time loss because next time you get into forest temple you're just gonna have to walk all the way through it's fine um maybe the one thing you might think about is if you don't have minuet then you're, you're gonna have to go to the place twice so in considering this say you are i don't know you just move to adult and you think, hey, I have Hookshot, I have Bow, but I don't have Strength Up. Should I go to Forest Temple? If you have Minuet or Bolero, sure, it's a, it's a small track. If you don't have both of these, you know, maybe, uh, and say Minuet is on OT, you're going to have to go through all the Hyrule Field, climb a Lost Woods, do the whole thing, you get into Forest Temple, you do the first two checks, you do Outside Courtyard, and then bam, you don't find the Strength Up. What do you do? You get out... And then you find the strength up somewhere else. And next time you still don't have minuet, you're going to have to do the full track again. So that, in that case, that is a massive time loss, right? So think if, like, maybe getting to the dungeon is not a time loss in itself. Next up we have Fire Temple 1F. There's the first check in Fire Temple, the so-called check of legends you get inside. 
pull to the left, there's a girl inside the cell. That chest I have seen so many times uh, holding out great items, hookshot, bow, strength up. That is a check that I always do, right? Myself, I don't like uh, risking the chance that it has something. It's fear one, you just need hovers or hookshot or bolero to get to it. You don't need a tonic. Uh, you also have the rest of 1F, the, the first level in, four step, well, in Fire Temple. You have the check to your left as you get into the lava room. And you also have the one to your right, which you need explosives. Like these three checks, maybe consider doing those before you get out of the Fire Temple. On Shadow Temple, there's the two checks to your left as you as you come in. The Red Dead one and the Dead Hand. Those two, very great idea to do, even if you don't have hovers. Just get in, hookshot through, do those two. Next time you get in, you don't even have to get to the other side, right? And Spirit Temple, Child Side. If Spirit Temple is a medallion, I always try to do Child Side as soon as possible. There's two checks that require magic ordinarily that you can do using flame storage or just decoustic usage as Spirit Temple. That is the map chest and the one with the Beamos, all right? So, great decision. Spirit Temple medallion, go as kid, do what you can. Now, stone dungeons. Now, this is a harder decision. Uh, you don't have to clear any stone dungeon except in all dungeon seed. Say you need Shadow Temples and Medallion and Nocturne is an OT. Well, there you go. You're going to have to do everything. Classic example. Uh, but you might still want to go for full or partial clears on stone dungeons depending on some scenarios. All right? First of all, it's a very fast, fast dungeon like Deku Tree or Dodongos. Maybe you want to go in there. You got bombs early, you can go into the dongles. Should you full clear it? Maybe not. Uh, what I usually decide to is do everything. I open up the, the, the dongle mouth and then I get out. Okay? Uh, maybe I can get burned by it? Sure, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. Uh, let's see. You can do a good number of early checks with minimal time loss. Once again, same examples if you can do Forest Temple outside courtyard, Fire Temple 1F, and Shadow Temple do two checks to the left. Generally a good decision. I mean, I'm not saying beeline to those stone dungeons, but if you start running out of checks and maybe you, you're considering, these are, are good decisions you can do. You have very strong reason to believe the dungeon has progression. Sometimes you, you start getting items that make you suspicious, right? So you get a hammer, you're like, huh, this is interesting. You get hover boots and shadow temple is a stone dungeon. You start thinking, right? Or you get dense fire. So... Uh, yeah, in these cases, uh, you might think, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna take the chance and go for the stone dungeon." And finally, of course, you are desperate. You have done everything else you can think of, and you're like, "Man, I have no other choice but go into Stone Shadow and go up until Bongo." Well, that's how it goes. Sometimes it doesn't pay off. Sometimes it does. I mean, uh, these are the hard decisions you are faced in a couple seats. Mini dungeons. We have three uh, secondary dungeons in the game. Of course, you guys know it's Bottom on the Ball, Ice Cavern, and GTG. Uh, they have very high jack check density. Maybe not Ice Cavern, but the other two for sure. A very good dungeon to clear. Decently fast. They have all uh, the same problem. They have terrible accessibility. Except for Bottom on the Ball if you have Nocturne. Right? But getting to Ice Cavern, fucking pain in the ass if you don't have Irons or Minuet. And even if you do, takes a long time. And GTG, terrible even from the front with Epona or from the back with Reverse Wasteland, a uh, huge time loss getting there. So, uh, let's see here. Bottom of the wall has 11 checks and 3 keys. A very fast clear time. You can do it in like uh, 13 minutes. Very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. I'm going to finish this video and then I'm going to watch the race with you guys. Maybe we can get into Discord and talk with each other. That would be pretty cool. Don't you think? Uh, all right. Uh, bottom of the wall, 11 checks, 3 keys, you can beat it in like 10 minutes if you have a fast route, uh, avoiding doing a, a two loop-de-loops, I'm gonna show a video in a video later how to do it. Um, excellent dungeon to clear, alright, sometimes it's barren, I mean, that's what happens. Ice Cavern, maybe not the best dungeon, but it has a song, and there's also 3 checks in the Zora's Fountain ancillary area, so that's 7 checks in the song. If you need the song, for sure, go for it. And GTG is 13 checks. That's a lot. But the problem with GTG is that it has a very high item requirement. You need hookshot, you need bow, you need explosives, you need hammer, um, logically, to do the other thing, the, the, the push block room, 
with the, with the two bats and the slugs, and also you need silver gauntlets for the like like room. So GTG has this issue. Uh, I wanted to try and look for tells if the dungeons are going to be required. So generally, if you need to do bottom of the wall, you're going to see an early song of storms. If you see that, you might want to get suspicious. If you get an early opponent song that gives you access to GTG right off the bat, and also big pose or big pose a terrible check, two percent chance it has something. So consider it. Uh, but yeah. And Brutus Ladder, if you get Brutus early, uh, probably required Jabu or required Ice Cavern. So uh, maybe you want to take a risk, take a chance, go for the play. It might pay off for you, right? Routing Skull Tolas. Uh, 10 to 20 Skulls, never has any hints. Uh, right off the bat, that's the minimal amount you should be thinking of, right? So every city going with the mindset, at least 20 Skulls I'm going to have to get eventually. I like to get 10 Skulls before the one hour mark. Uh, I'm not saying I, I change any plans to get 10 skulls, but I try getting them uh, organically in the way so that I can do this check, which more often than not has stuff. There are a lot of top rated players like Mochilla, like uh, Solly, I know plays this way as well. Uh, I think the man plays this way as well. I don't know if Cola does. They just absolutely skip skulls and take the chance, right? This can be very good if skulls are not required you save from a little amount of time to a massive amount of time depending on the skulls you choose to do. Um, but if there's something there basically it's an auto loss, right? So I've seen they win races in the back of this and I've seen them lose races in the back of this. So it's up to you, it's a risk. I myself I don't like taking the chances. I generally go for 10 skulls in the 10 uh, in the 1 hour mark uh, give or take and 20 skulls in the 2 hour mark give or take. And I do those checks. Of course, sometimes you're gonna wrap the bat to go to Deku Tree. You see, hey, hook shots on 50 scopes. Well, you know what? You're gonna have to do 50 scopes. In that case, you're gonna have to change your route somewhat heavily to go for these scopes uh, to get the school count that you need. I have a video specifically on scopes, right? The link is right here. Uh, you guys can, um, I don't know, you see it and, and type it in, or I'm gonna put it on the video description. It's on my channel, as you know. Let me copy here and just show you guys. It's uh, basically I go through every skull in the game, all right? And also how to get the dungeon skulls, everything, right? It's routing skull tools in your runs. I've released this March 14th, that is six days ago. All right, Forrest Wind. Forrest Wind, excellent item, all right? Uh, the great stuff with Forrest Wind is that it gives you more options in terms of routing. So. Uh, terrible checks, for example, Jabu Jabu, there is one check that you can do without the boomerang, that is the Stinger Room check, uh, and let's see, uh, this actually happened in the race, like, decently early, uh, decently, it was this week, it's not a long time ago, there was a Jabu Jabu way of the hero hint, um, should you go for that check without the boomerang, well, there's four checks in Jabu, there's the Stinger Room, Bubbles Room, the Tentacle Room, and Baronade. So, the Stinger's Room is 25% it has anything. If you don't have fast access to Jabu, say you don't have Serenade, you don't have Scale, you're going to have to climb the Zor River, or you come from Minuet, I guess, um, that's going to be like 3 to 4 minutes to get into the dungeon. You get to the Stinger's Room, do the check, there's nothing there. Well, you just lost a bunch of time. Now, if you have FW, that's a whole different matter. You can do just that, then you pick up Ruto, bring her to the top floor, do the Stinger's Room, check, there's nothing. No problem, just leave Forrest Wind, get the hell out. There's an FW uh, flag for Child Link and for Adult Link, there are two different ones. Next time you need to clear Jabu, easy, you just get into Deku Tree from a save warp, use FW, bam, you're inside Jabu once again. All right? So FW gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of room to play with not so good checks, you, you start considering them. You can also bail without full clearing hard to reach dungeons, for example GTG is like the best example. You get into GTG, uh, first two chests, say it's way the hero for example, or it's not. First two chests, bam, you find hover boots, you now can clear shadow temple. You think, hey I'm gonna leave, but what if there's another item in GTG, which is very possible. Well, if you have Forrest Wind, no problem, just leave FW, go do your shadow temple, uh, didn't find anything, didn't find any progression, just use FW, bam, you're back into GTG. 
If you don't have W, this is just me, right? I, I hate leaving GTG uncleared, with uh, not full cleared, because the likelihood it has more than one item is not very low. So, and I, I don't think doing the track there twice is very good. Also, with FW, you can make some minor time gains in a couple dungeons. So, in Forest Temple, if you have FW, you simply get into the Twisted Corridor, use FW, get out, you check the boss key chest, the Floor Master chest, use FW, bam, you're back. Shadow Temple, same thing, you use it in the Spikes room with the two Redads, get into the left room with the Flaming, flaming Skull, and the four bats, instead of killing the four bats, you simply explode the, the statue, check the item, it's nothing, use FW, you're out. Spirit Temple, uh, if you want to check the right side with the, the Bemos room and the Iron Knuckle, you use FW as you get into the main room, do that, as you get back, use FW, you're back on the, on the left side of the dungeon that you want to check, right? So FW can be used in very creative ways to make time in your inner run. Opening routes. Opening routes is something that uh, people maybe put more importance than they should uh, most times. Like it's not absolutely going to make you win a race or lose a race, but it does make a difference, all right? Um, the most beginner friendly and most basic route uh, I see people doing is getting from Kokiri Forest. Uh, they go straight to market, uh, wait a little bit until it becomes nighttime, then you do Richard, you do Slingshot mini game, then Richard, then you do ZL, you go straight to Lon Lon. Save warp, then you do Deku Tree in Lost Woods and get Sarius. If you get a bomb, maybe you want to do South Hyrule or check Gerudo Valley, it's up to you, right? Um, checking Gerudo Valley may be a good idea. Sphere Zero, two checks, uh, something to consider. Also, the Open Grotto in the South Hyrule. Uh, now, more advanced opening. This is going to give you one hint stone and one check. This is going from Kokiri Forest to the Open Grotto in South Hyrule. And then from there you get your markets. It's going to turn into night, but no problem. You can use the Schrodinger's chain trick to keep the chain loaded and get into night markets. Uh, this demands a little bit of practice, right? It's not something that you're going to get without any practice. It's not too hard either. Uh, this is an option. The one that I like doing is the second one here. Uh, I go from Kokiri to the open grotto and then I, I go to Lake Hylia and pick up the owl to get to the market. Generally, I, I try being fast enough that I can uh, get into daytime and still do the slingshot minigame, buy a couple sticks, get the skull. That's just me, right? Uh, this gives you two hint stones and one check. Uh, the more complete opening, which of, of course also costs more time, is going from Kokiri to the open grotto and then you go into Gerudo Valley, then you do the box and the uh, waterfall. There's also a hint stone down there. You get to Lake Hyde, it's going to be early morning, uh, so there's three minutes, uh, full day. You're not going to want to get to the market right away. So you can check what's in the bottom of Lake Hyde, you can set up your Scarecrow song, you can do child fishing. Uh, maybe check the two hint stones in there, and then you pick up the owl and go to market. All right? That's going to give you five hint stones with the two on the back of the lake and four checks. This costs, of course, a bit more time. if you opt to do this and everything is barren maybe you are like five to ten minutes behind the competition so something to consider all right and this final opening here i've seen i think solly do in a race i found it very interesting he came from kokiri forest he went straight to guru the valley checked box and uh, uh waterfall and the handstone save and quit back to link's house and then got your market using schrodinger's chain all right this allows just enough uh, daytime to do that. This is one of the more advanced ones. I wouldn't uh, recommend if you're starting out. There's this video here by my good friend Mochilla that you can... Let me pick it up here. So this is the OT Random Openers video by him, which is pretty cool. He actually shows you how to do each and every one of these openings I've, I've mentioned, all right? And compares the times that it's going to take for you to do each one and also pros and cons, all right? So great video for you to look up, definitely. All right, breaking logic. Breaking logic can be very good or very bad. That, go, that goes for everything in life, I suppose, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but you, you gotta think well if you wanna do it. There's stuff that you almost always wanna, you wanna do. For example, Medallion Forest Temple. Uh, you don't have Minuet or Cyrus. 
no problem, just mind escape, go for it. If you have Weird Hero Ice Cavern, but you don't have Zelda's Lullaby, should you do Hover Boot entry in Domain? For sure, you're gonna have to do Ice Cavern anyways. So you just uh, enter there with Hover Boots and you go on with your life. Other things like GTG may be more complicated. You see uh, Weird Hero GTG, should you reverse Wasteland there? It really depends on the items you got. If I don't have Hookshot and Bow, I probably will not do that because that's a lot of checks you can't do in GTG without those two. So that's a bit iffy, all right? If I don't have Silvers, very likely I'll do that. Uh, even if I don't have Long Shot or Hovers, that's no problem. I just get through the through the quicksand there with the with the backpack, all right? Uh, there's also uh, other situations where you should or should not break logic, so you should think accordingly to see if the risk you're taking is too high or not too high. Uh, there's maybe too many cases for me to cite here, but yeah. For example, uh, doing Fire Temple without Goron Tonic, zero risk uh, if you know how to do the thing, so just go with it. Don't wait for a wallet or find a Goron Tonic, for example. Uh, keep in mind that items that you obtain out of logic uh, do not uh, allow you to ignore the in logic items that remain, right? Say you get your GTG out of logic, you get, I don't know, hover boot there, you go and beat Shadow Temple. There is still an item in logic that you should have gotten in the past and you, uh, you must not forget it, right? There's stuff that is skippable, for example, uh, in the, this case of GTG, say Epona Song is in Ocarina of Time and Long Shot is not accessible, but you do Reverse Wasteland. No problem. You just uh, got yourself out of an old dungeon seat. Great stuff. Sometimes it's necessary. For example, you do Shadow Temple without a bow using the bomb to, to pull down the statue. Are you going to have to find a bow in the future? For sure. And it's going to be in a place that is not uh, that is not on the further spheres from Shadow Temple. It's going to be on the previous ones, right? So you can't forget that. Now game phases, uh, we're coming up to the end of the video here. Game phases is a concept that I pretty much stole from ATZ, alright? Uh, there's these two <coughs> videos that ATZ made on routing that are a lot better than mine. I really recommend you, you watch them. I'm gonna I'm gonna show the first one here, like really fast, right? It's in his Anatomy Z YouTube channel. Ocarina of Time randomized routing tutorial. There's the part one and part two. Part one is more geared uh, towards uh, more beginner players and part two geared towards advanced players. Uh, and there he says that there's three phases there, which I do agree. There's the early game, mid game, late game. Well, the early game, you're mainly focusing on doing what you absolutely have to do and also checks per minute. So you want to go to check dance areas and try to knock down as many checks as you can as fast as possible. As you start getting items that enable you to do medallion dungeons, you're going to focus on the mid game, which is hardcore progression, right? So you're going to forget about uh, going for overworld or stuff that you may or may not have to do and you start doing the things that you absolutely need to do, which are the dungeons. As you get to the late game, you're going to be, uh, be trying to find one or two items that are missing. And now you're going to have to use some techniques, maybe sphere analysis, or you, uh, you're maybe going to go for checks per minute once again, check density to bail you out of the seed. When I talk about spheres, uh, first of all, explaining a sphere is the number of prerequisites you need to reach an item or a dungeon. When I say that something is sphere zero, that means you can get to it uh, right off the bat, start the game. And if I say that something is like sphere five, that means that you have like four prerequisites, actions or items or songs to get to that uh, check or item. Right? Analyzing the spoiler log, very good way to understand this concept. So here I show a picture of uh, a seed. If you generate a seed here, let me open here. One second. One second, I'm a bit lost here, guys. Real fast. All right, here we go. Great stuff. I, I had lost this uh, this one over here. Uh, so this is a seed that I generated just now, and if you don't generate a race seed, but just a regular seed, you're gonna have this button here, spoiler log, to click, and when you click it, there's this playthrough uh, tab here. 
If you go to it, it shows all the spheres that the seed has, and you can go to it one by one. So see, sphere zero here, these are all the items or actions that you can access right off the bat as the seed started. So grow the valley, create freestanding piece of heart, that's the box. Uh, there's going to be a scale there. That's going to open more stuff for us, for example, Zora's Domain. As I go to Sphere 1, see on Death Mountain Trail, there's a piece of heart on top of the uh, the longest cavern, Iron Boots there. Now you might be asking, hey, Death Mountain Trail, well, that doesn't require anything, but actually it considers here time travel as an action, right? So that's the, the thing here. Queen Goma, Spirit Medallion, well, Queen Goma, I absolutely need a slingshot before, so if I see here on Sphere 0, you see that I get a slingshot from Mido Chest top right, this opens up Goma on Sphere 1, and so on and so forth until we get to Sphere 19 where he beats again, alright? So analyzing this and seeing what the game expects you to do in logic is a good way to understand what's expected uh, from you in future seeds that you try to solve, alright? Um, as I said here, as you get to the late game, maybe you're going to be off by one item, two items, and then you're going to analyze the, the spheres. Generally, this is a rule of thumb, but the later items you get in the sea, the later spheres, these are going to open up the further items you want you to get. So say you get a hammer on Mido's house, that's sphere zero, and then, I don't know, in sphere 10, you get, um, let's say, a, a hover boot. Great stuff. Now you have a hover boots on sphere 10 and you have hammer on sphere 0. You need one item to finish the game. Where is it more likely for you to find this item? In fire temple or in shadow temple? In this case I would say shadow temple because you found because you found hover boots later in the progression. Right? So this is the idea of, uh, of seed analysis. This can absolutely backfire, all right? You can think like this, you go to Shadow Temple, bam, there's nothing there. It was actually in Fire Temple the whole time. Well, maybe the item was on the previous sphere that you didn't think to check. It happens. Uh, if you're out of ideas in terms of uh, spheres here, you can also do this, which I also like doing. I have a basic tier list of dungeons in my head, and basically, I don't know, uh, I can go and clear a stone dungeon. Which stone dungeon am I going to clear? I... Oh, I have shown the the mini dungeons, right? And then I use this for my full dungeons. Let's go with that. So Deco Tree, excellent. Uh, most every every seed you're gonna clear it. There are seven checks in there, zero keys. It's an A plus in my rating. Like I not many seeds I don't clear Deco Tree. The Dongo Cavern I'm missing a no here. The Dongo Cavern, seven checks, zero keys. It's an A from me, it's a bit slower than Deco Tree, but still very, very fast. Very low item requirements, uh, just bombs or hammer or strength up, right? Uh, Jabu Jabu, only four checks, right? Uh, there's no keys there, of course. That's a D from me. Uh, it's a slowish dungeon. The first three checks, the stingers, bubbles, and the, the tentacle, those three, you can maybe argue those are not that slow, but then the final check, Barry Nade, that takes a long time. You have to do the other two, two tentacle rooms, get your big octo, <coughs> go down, put the box, and then get your Barry Nade, and of course beat the boss. So the fourth check in Jabu, a lot slow. And finally, the D uh, is settled basically because getting to Jabu is very inconvenient. Maybe if you have a silver scale and you have Serenade, it's not that bad, but still pretty slow. Forest Temple, 8 checks, 6 keys. There's a lot of checks in Forest Temple comparatively, comparatively to the other adult dungeons. Uh, you can't skip any keys, uh, except in Key Sanity. It's a C from me, because it's decently fast to get to Forest Temple if you have Bolero, or especially if you have Minuet, of course. Uh, but Forest Temple is very linear. Uh, the checks are all... Uh, no, the checks are okay, actually. Uh, I take that back. But the temple is very long. That's a problem. It's the second longest or the longest temple tied with Shadow Temple. And yeah, I mean, and furthermore, I don't like Forest Temple. There, there's also that. So that's a C from me. It's not like the first temple I think of while checking. Fire Temple, six checks, nine keys. So there is less checks in Fire Temple than Forest Temple. Uh, maybe a lower priority, would think. But... Fire Temple is decently faster to clear than Forest Temple, unless you're talking about Megaton Hammer Chest or High Scorn and Compass. 
but the middle part of the dungeon where you have the rolling boulders, there's a decent amount of checks there. There's also a bunch of easily accessible school tools, which is also a plus on my side. So I generally prefer che I prefer checking stone fire than stone forest. That's just me. They're both C. None are really great options. Water Temple, only 4 checks, 7 keys, terrible dungeon, Water Temple, very slow, you have to deal with the, with the water going down and up, you have the frustration of getting a bunch of small keys as you're clearing it, which compounds to your desperation, for sure, so I, I think Water Temple is the lowest priority for me in checking a stone dungeon, that's an easy D for me, maybe E. Uh, and plus, if you don't have Serenade, terrible accessibility, you have to cross the whole Hyrule feel to get to it. Shadow Temple to access Shadow, of course you need uh, Nocturne, that goes without saying. 12 checks, 6 keys, that's a B from me. Lots of checks in Shadow Temple, though it's pretty long, it's not a fast dungeon at all. Um, but the amount of checks kind kind of kind of counterbalances that, right? Uh, it makes it much uh, less bad of a situation. And finally we have Spirit Temple, uh, we have 14 checks uh, split between child side and adult side, 6 keys, that's an A from me, great temple, especially if you get Requiem, uh, I mean if you don't get Requiem then maybe Spirit Temple not the best uh, place to check, uh, not the first thing I would consider for sure, uh, but if you do have Requiem it's a great place to check, there's a bunch of chests, uh, very fast and easily accessible. And aside from the mirror shield, which maybe is hard to find sometimes, it's not super high item requirement except for silver gauntlets, right? So this is my personal tier list when I have to, to go for uh, stone dungeons. Definitely I go for spirit temple and adult site. Shadow temple is my second in, in line. And then I have forest and fire on a basic tie. Maybe I, I skew towards fire a little bit more. And finally water temple sucks. I if I have to go to stone water, basically, without a hint, that is a, a huge ax for me. And finally we have like the commonplace advice we have to practice, of course. Uh, you have to play a bunch of seeds and get used to it. As you make mistakes and you find out stuff, you're gonna get better. That goes without saying. There's this great resource here on the Zutter Simulator made, made by Scatter here. Let me open up this link. Uh, this is a tool that allows you to basically simulate a seed, alright? So it's going to generate a seed for you, you can generate another one clicking here on the on the red button. And you take decisions here, so let's see here. I'm going to make a new seed here. A little blank for here, random, I'm going to choose here S3 tournament, generate. The seed is made here, you can also upload the spoiler log if you want. And there we go. And now you can play, quote unquote, the seed, you, you check the three, the four checks in Midas House here, I click here, I get a recovery heart, I click here, I get a deck of stick, I get arrows, I get a recovery heart. So Midas is is barren. Next up, what would I do? I'd go to Hyrule Field, and from this I'd go to the open grotto. This is going to be, let's see, uh, cha -cha -cha -cha, Field Near Lake, outside, da -da, remote southern grotto. Yeah, this is the field near lake outside fence grotto chest. This is the open grotto. I click here, I get a heart container. Alright, great stuff. Then I go to Lake Hylia, and then I, s I go to Hyrule Field, and then I go to Market, and I'm in Market, and Market. Alright, now I do Child Shooting Gallery, and then get a piece of heart, and you go from there. You, you catch my drift, alright? So basically, you can play the seed here and see if you're making good decisions, and obviously, you can do a bunch of seeds in the time you do a single seed in the actual game. It doesn't improve your execution, of course. But uh, it's a good way to practice, I've done it here and there, especially if you're at work and you're, you're not paying much attention, you have some off time, you can't boot up your emulator, but you can play this, so it's better than nothing, right? And yeah, that's it. Um, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a bit different from what I usually do, I generally like to show gameplay and be more hands-on, but I thought I'd like to uh, organize my ideas here and show you guys what I'm thinking in terms of seeds and general resolution as I play the game, alright? Uh, as you know, you can catch me live on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv uh, forward slash graffiti x. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.